This is Jonah. Jonah was a prophet of the Lord, mm. who was called by God to go to the city of Nineveh and preach against its wickedness. Nineveh? Uh, yes, Nineveh. Got it. God expressed to Jonah that time was of the essence, as God planned to destroy the city lest they repent. I arrive, I forewarn, they repent, you forgive, it's the same every single time. Faced with a rather undesirable task, Jonah decided to take the scenic route. Jonah boarded a ship for Tarshish. The Lord, however, anticipated this maneuver and summoned a suitable counter. But Jonah called the Lord's bluff. The sailors grew concerned with the severity of the squall. Their vessel was in danger of capsizing. Why would such a terrible storm occur so suddenly in an area known for its placid seas? The sailors went to this strange foreign passenger for answers. Jonah explained that he was a Hebrew and worshipped the Lord. The sailors were quite aware of the Lord's reputation. Aye, but what should we be doing to calm these tempestuous seas? It was clear that God was not going to let this go. So Jonah decided to raise the stakes. Throw me overboard. This great storm has come upon you due to my actions. The sailors did not want to be murderers. But Jonah left them little choice. Oh Lord, please do not punish us for taking this here man's life. Here. Would you get on with it? Here. This time, it was God who called Jonah's bluff. The belly of the great fish was oddly conducive to the living conditions of a terrestrial mammal. Refusing to repent, Jonah sat in the gastrointestinal system of the creature for three days. The Lord sent several gentle incentives for Jonah to repent. Jonah easily countered the stench of the stomach acids. However, he found the acidic effects significantly harder to ignore. On the third day, having run out of options, Jonah offered a prayer to the Lord. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. It is not certain whether his prayer of repentance was earnest or begrudging. However, we do know the Lord heard Jonah and responded. Jonah knew the key to spreading a message was first to convince a legitimate member of the community. Luckily, there was one available at the gate. Uh, 
40 more days and then it'll be overturned. Huh? Uh, what did you say? 40 more days, and Nineveh will be overturned. Overturned? By who? God. You mean God? As in, the Lord God? God? Yes. We must repent! This particular Ninevite possessed slightly more enthusiasm than Jonah had hoped. Everybody put on your sackcloth! The Lord will level this city if we don't fast in sackcloth! Repent! Sackcloth! The news spread all the way to the royal palace. Your Highness, the Lord insists we repent. <gasps> the Lord? Is in the Lord God, God of gods, Lord of lords, Lord? <sighs> The king wasted no time. He decreed that all people turn from their evil ways, and every man and beast, Moo? yes, even beasts, were to embrace the Hebrew custom of repentance by wearing sackcloth and sitting in ashes. God told Jonah the exciting news. The Ninevites, having turned from their evil ways, would now be spared. Eh? Oh! Yay! Jonah was less than pleased with this development, and did not mince words about it. Is this not what I said would happen? This is exactly why I fled to Tarshish, because I knew, I knew that you are gracious and compassionate and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. So, Lord, just kill me. Just kill me now! The Lord tried to help Jonah talk through his feelings. Ah. However, Jonah was feeling the need for some time alone. Jonah made his way outside of town and sat down, hoping the Lord would reconsider the fate of Nineveh. The Lord provided a vine to shade Jonah from the hot desert sun. The additional shade was most welcome. Mm. But then, quite deliberately, the Lord introduced the vine to a worm. Uh, just kill me. Would you kill me, please? God questioned whether or not Jonah had the right to be angry about the plant. Yes, angry enough to die. God pointed out that Jonah was concerned about a vine which he had done nothing to bring into being or help grow. Should God not in turn be concerned about Nineveh, a city in which there were more than 120,000 people and many, many, many animals? Jonah was rather disgusted to realize that there was nothing he could say to refute God's point. Mm. But he wasn't about to admit it. I wish I were dead. Jonah may have wished he was dead, but his story lives on today. No one knows whatever became of Jonah, but one can imagine. He is still sitting in the desert, east of Nineveh, arms crossed, refusing to repent, and the Lord refusing to give up on him. <laughs>